This is my post-fight video for Julius Jackson versus Jose Uskataki. Now, as you all know, I have been a follower of Julius Jackson and we've covered him many times on Bayloric TV. And this time he got in the ring, he didn't get the win, but was sensationally stopped in two rounds by the big punching Uskataki. Now, there are lots of things to talk about here. I've taken my time before doing this post-fight video so I didn't get emotional. But here are my thoughts on the fight. Now, let's go back almost a year ago where he fought, I think it was Christopher Nelson. And in that post-fight video to Christopher Nelson, I said, I did state to Julius Jackson and his camp about his hands needing to be kept higher said he was open to the overhand right. And I think I mentioned something about him having to hold and work in his holding as well. All the things that you would have thought they would have worked on over the year that he'd been out of the ring sparring with Gennady Golovkin and all the rest of it, you would have thought maybe they would have improved that, the Jackson camp, knowing that he was open to the right hand. And uh, to my shock horror, the same issues were there. Same dropping, you know, dropping the right hand and leaving yourself open to right hands over the top. Uh, basic boxing fundamentals that if you don't get right at the high level, it will be exposed. Christopher Nelson, from what I remember rightly, was catching Jackson alarmingly with the right hand over the top. But Jackson was able to suck it up and fight back. Just like in this fight, he sucked up some big shots and tried to fight back. Although this time he didn't hold and he was in with a guy who was significantly a better puncher um, and strategically knew what he was doing. He knew as soon as, you know, Jackson left, the, used the jab, he could pop a right hand over the top and he exploited that. So you had one fighter that had a game plan and another fighter that didn't. And if he did have a game plan, he was unable to execute it. So what happens now? Boxing is a cruel game and a cruel sport. And for my brother for the Virgin Islands, I, I first want to say to you, don't be despondent. Yes, you've suffered a loss, but it could be a blessing in disguise, depending on how you react from this loss. Now, bear in mind, the WBC super middleweight champion of the world got knocked out in a round by Derek Edwards, who a lot of people really didn't know much about. He managed to get two good wins, well, he ended up becoming world champion, WBC world champion. So we know now that a loss is not the end of your career, but it's what you do after that loss. Are you now going to, you know, you rebuild, but will you be a journeyman fighter? Meaning, will you be a fighter that other fighters, other young fighters coming through will use you as a stepping stone? Or are you going to take more control of your career and, you know, to be taken as a serious contender and make the changes necessary. It's clear, a year you've been out of training camp or out of fighting, you've been out of the ring. And that's been a long gap. For some fighters, a gap of a year is good. They rejuvenate, they get, they work, you know, behind closed doors and then they come back and they're a better fighter. Unfortunately for Julius Jackson, that didn't work out. I think Julius is a guy that needs to fight regularly. And this may have backfired on him. And, you know, for you to come back and you come back against a guy that I, I believe it was for either a world title eliminator or close to a world title eliminator. You know, you rank number five in the world. I think, you know, you need to be have a little, at least a warm up fight before you come back and fight again. And I guess, you know, a year out for me, a young fighter is pretty unacceptable. And I guess that's because he's under Al Heyman. I preferred Julius when he was fighting in the Caribbean in the sense that he was getting regular fights. But of course, the TV deals is different. More money Al Heyman's paying. So I guess you go where the money is. But the one thing the question has to be asked now is that whether the Jackson camp need help or if they're prepared to take the help or they're going to keep fighting um, with obviously these technical uh, deficiencies basically being, you know, Jackson looked pretty basic in there um, and he was shut down very quickly, wasn't able to use the jab, wasn't able to, 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 to distance himself from his opponent's cleared, get on the jab, back this guy up, didn't do that. And so he was a sitting target. So 
what happens now? I don't know what happens to Julius Jackson. I know that I did state myself. I was really happy to see that he's one of the fighters, next generation fighters who markets himself. He was on a cooking channel. He's been a chef. He's been doing lots of marketing in, in Virgin Islands. He's well marketed. I think now he needs to, for my opinion, the balance needs to be put right. You know, whatever he's doing in his personal life, Congratulations in your personal life, Julius. But from a professional fighter's point of view, business is business. You can't play boxing. I'm sure you know that. And I'm sure this fight has kind of dawned on you that some adjustments definitely need to be made from a technical standpoint. And, uh, you know, I hope that maybe he can install maybe a more experienced trainer in the corner who will be able to work on the boxing fundamentals. I still believe that Julius can go on to be a world champion. But there will be a lot of technical adjustments need to be made. The other question is, what has Al Heyman got in, in terms of plans for Julius Jackson? Is Julius Jackson a, 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 a uh, you know, a, an opponent now for other fighters to use through the Super Mario Vision, like a gatekeeper? Or is he going to be a fighter that's going to have world title ambitions? Who knows? I don't know, you know. Um, so some tough decisions had to be made in Julius Jackson's, Jackson's corner. Julius Jackson's corner. Um, his father was a world champion, no doubt. Um, but you know, I think some adjustments need to be made. Julius needs to be back in the ring as soon as possible, and uh, he needs to rebuild his career. I'm sure he knows that. So I believe that Julius can come back, but he can only come back if he makes comes back and has a serious threat on the super middleweight division. If he makes the technical adjustments necessary, he's young, he's a young fighter, he's a humble young boy, young man, and um, yeah, there's nothing arrogant about Julius Jackson, so I think he'll, it's just the right, having the right trainer with him now to take him to the next level. He's Jad's done a good job of him so far, but can he take him on to the next level? Not sure. Um, John Jackson as well was in a position where he was beaten and delete and got caught with a big right hand as well, or big left hand. You know, is that a fundamental thing with the camp? You know, I wouldn't say that Jackson's got a bad chin. I'd just say that guy was a big puncher. And you can't keep taking big punches like that on your chin and giving him free punches on the chin. So, all in all, I think Julius Jackson can come back. It was a it was a bad defeat, but it could have been a blessing in disguise, depending on how the Jackson camp moved forward with it. Um... I don't know. He's in Abel Sanchez camp. Maybe the question would be, why didn't he train in the camp with uh, Gennady Golovkin for this fight? Would have been interesting. I would like to see how that would have worked out. And training in the Caribbean. I think that Caribbean fighters really do need to sign themselves up with the US or, you know, um, in Europe to have a successful boxing career. I don't believe that basing yourself in the Caribbean is um, beneficial to your future boxing career. And I would even argue if being based in Cuba helps either. Maybe for the amateurs, but not for the pros. I think you've got to look at places like Europe, um, Germany, um, America, you know, the UK even, in terms of, you know, more, more so America. And the Virgin Islands is not far away. So I think that he, he, I think relocation is a possibility. And to have a look at maybe having another trainer either on board or a new training and training um, setup. You know, you need to get the basics done right before we move forward um, in boxing. So those are my thoughts. Julius Jackson has got a great um, support behind him, you know, and he has a faith in God. I'm sure that's going to help as well. But, you know, you've got to help yourself. And by helping yourself means making the right decisions. Those are my thoughts. I'm out.